Hi, Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and here's another interview in my series of interviews with subscribers. Enjoy! Well, welcome to another Idiot Quilter presentation and today I have a very special guest, Nora Burroughs. Am I saying your last name correctly? Yes, Burroughs. Yep. Burroughs. Okay. And I discovered um, Nora just by accident. Uh, when I was looking through YouTube for things about quilting. And uh, I thought, this is somebody I want to interview. And the reason I want to interview you is because I think, well, you notice I call myself the idiot quilter. And the reason I call myself the idiot quilter is because I make all kinds of mistakes and I don't hide them. I reveal my mistakes to my audience because I feel that, especially newbies to quilting, you got to know that everything is going to be perfect and you learn from your mistakes. And that's what attracted me to your channel because I picked up on you were trying to um, quilt on your, uh, uh, you were using a method for quilting on your embroidery machine, I think it was, or? My my regular domestic machine. I was trying to do the quilt as you go. It's actually this yeah, quilt, right? that's it. Right there. <laughs> oh, so you may, yeah. And you were having some struggles with that. Yeah. And I have tried that method myself too. And I can't say as though it's, I'm a fan of it, but when I saw that you were struggling too, I didn't feel alone in that environment. So that's Nora and uh, I'll just jump right in. So Nora, uh, where approximately are you living? Not specifically, you know, just yeah, your I'm, area. I'm living in the United States, uh, upstate New York. Uh, it's a really nice time of year here. It's fall and things are just starting to turn colors. I think a little earlier than normal. We've gotten a lot of rain, so really like it up here. Yeah. Okay. That's great. And um, how'd you get started in quilting? I just actually started, I'd say a couple of years ago, like maybe three or four years ago, I had done, um, you know, crafts my whole life and had done some craft booths, uh, basically making a little bit of everything, you know, pot holders and crowns. But I found that I really only, you know, I'd make a couple of these kinds of things and I'd be like, I never want to make that ever again. And quilting was the first thing that I made that I just, I can't stop. Like, I just want to make more and more and more and more. And I want to know everything about quilting. I want to know everything about quilt history and the different types of quilting and experiment with things that have never been done before. So the, that's kind of, but the boring side of it is that my first quilt was a baby quilt, which I think is like everybody's first quilt. And I wish I had a more exciting story than that, but it was a baby quilt. But, but the fun thing was, so I had done all of these crafts and everything and my cousin was having a baby and I was like, you know what, I'm going to make her a baby quilt. And my neighbors, my, 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 my girlfriend neighbor, she crochet, she knits. And so she had been knitting some of her uh, nieces and nephews blankets. And she said, you know what, this upcoming niece or nephew, I'm going to um, be making a blanket for, I'm going to quilt it. So I said, that would be fun. We should both quilt. And then both of our husbands decided they want to try qu quilting. So all four of us at the same time, kind of like, went to the fabric store and launched into like, you know, none of us had made a quilt before we were all making like the disappearing nine patch. And I was the only one who finished my quilt, but that was kind of like a, a, a really fun first go. Cause you know, you didn't feel like you were alone. Right. And so you say, does your husband quilt? No, no. Oh. He's very crafty though. Like if I'm doing any kind of craft, kind of like, uh, I craft a lot, like while I'm watching TV, while we're watching TV together. And every now and then, like if I'm doing something, he'll kind of jump in there. He'll, he'll kind of mess around with it, with whatever project it is. So, and he'll give me advice about, um, about stuff. Like I'll have stuff on the table and he'll kind of walk by and he'll be like, what if you mix that up there? You know, he, he likes to give us two cents about things, which is yeah, good. Well, I like that too. Well, sometimes a second set of eyes is good, you yeah. know, uh, uh, for things like that. So, did anybody in your inf in your family influence you? Uh, do you come from craft uh, from quilters or? Not until after I started quilting, actually. So my mom um, sewed like all my Halloween costumes and stuff growing up, but I don't really count that. But my aunt Donna, um, maybe I shouldn't say her name, but I don't think she. Can. 
think she cares my aunt Donna. She, um, she made me, uh, she made me a wedding quilt and I just really appreciated the wedding quilt, but I didn't really appreciate it until after I started quilting and I went back and I was like, wow, this is actually an amazing quilt that she spent quite a bit of time on that, that kind of thing. So she's a quilter. So now that, um, now that I'm quilting, we, you know, she's like given me some of her fabric and I just saw her last month at our family reunion. And she and I were just like gushing about quilting. And then my other aunt Patty, who also is like a big quilter. And she also has given me a quilt in the past that again, I didn't really, you know, I, I appreciated it in the normal person kind of appreciation. Um, but she does like all of her stuff hand quilted and she's like, uh, kind of a master quilter. And so both of these aunts, I've kind of after kind of discovering my love of quilting have been able to kind of um, extend my bond with them a little bit through the craft. Yeah, I think that's true. I think um, anybody who comes into quilting and uh, didn't weren't around it a lot. And when they first get started, they have a whole new appreciation for something they may have gotten in the past that someone gave them. I know the same thing happened to me. I got a quilt from my grandmother. It was beautiful. It was lovely. I never saw her quilting it, um, but, and I got it on my wedding. I got a small quilt as well. And I thought, well, this is nice. Yeah. You know, and everything, I didn't appreciate the work until, and I've gone back to those quilts now and studied them a little bit more. And, and now I see, oh yeah, my grandmother did everything by hand because she made this quilt in the seventies or before. And then yep. my friend who did machine quilting, um, I looked at it closer and went, Okay, now I, you know, I get it and I appreciate it even more. So what's your favorite creation to date and why? Or do you have one? I do have a favorite creation to date. It's one of my newest creations. I actually have it right here. So hold oh, good. It let's see you. it. Yes, yes. Um, but it's my Black Lives Matter quilt that I just made. Um, and I do have a, a video on this on my, my mostly quilts channels. The name of my, let's see where it is. So what I love about this um can't really see it very well I actually like the back I'll show you the back even more than I like the front and I made this because I had a clothesline hanging in my front yard that I had made my this this is another quilt series I did on my mostly quilt quilts YouTube channel um and it was part of a series called hang a quilt outside like Mary Fonz and Mary Fonz is this famous quilter who I love and over COVID she lives in Chicago and over COVID she would take her beautiful quilts and hang them outside on her fire escape so that her neighbors this is when like everybody was inside and you weren't even like leaving to go to the grocery store her neighbors could kind of look outside and have this piece of joy kind of through her quilts right. and she would change them out and I loved that idea so much. So um, obviously I don't have a, a um, fire escape. So I had my husband hang a clothesline out in our front yard and I made this quilt out of like the most brightly colored scraps I had so that you could see it really easily. So I had this clothesline and then I made this Black Lives Matter quilt for my clothesline. So the Mary Fonz quilt came inside and this one went back outside. Um, since then, unfortunately, like this enormous tree in our yard came down and took out the two trees that had the clothesline on them. So, so now I have no, no quilts on my clothesline, but I wanted to do like a Instagram thing or something like quilts on the clothesline or quilts by the side of the road. But, but now I need to, to get my clothesline back in order. Um, but the cool thing about this is, so I, so this is like this dove block. It's supposed to be a, a like a peace dove, a dove, which I thought was perfect for a Black Lives Matter quilt. And I was going to use it as like the cornerstones. But the pattern I had was uh, a foundation, like foundation piecing, which I don't mm -hmm. do. And so I was trying to um, make it with the uh, one fourth seam allowance. It was kind of a nightmare. So I ended up with like a gazillion of um, let me find them here, a gazillion of the dove wings. And so I decided to put them on the back of the quilt. So like these, these were kind of some of the wings and these were more of the wings. So these were all just like total mistakes. But in the process of making all these mistakes, I kind of like made the back of the quilt kind of. Um, so it it's just really ended up nice. being kind of like this modern. Yeah, it's it's got a, a modern feel to it. Yeah. yeah. So, and I made it with a uh, civil war recreation fabric. So it's like modern. It has this like civil war era 
Um, so that, that's my favorite thing I've done so far. That's Hopefully, what I, you know, I'll make something better every year. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like about your style though. You're, you improvise, uh, you know, you, you go beyond the pattern kind of a thing and, and you're not afraid to experiment. And I, I quite admire that because, you know, there are a lot of quilters out there will stick to the pattern and they get themselves all bothered, hot and bothered because it doesn't come out quite the way uh, that they thought it would because of the pattern. They're not sure what they did wrong. And instead of just running with it and going, well, I'll make it my own and do something creative with it. Um, they get really uptight and stressed out. And this is supposed to be fun, not stressing you out kind of thing. So that's what I really like about your style. It's very innovative. Um, so that brings Thanks, me to my next question. What type of quilter would you describe yourself as? And I think we've just already maybe covered that, but what do you, how would you describe yourself? Yeah, I, modern? I like it all. Like I love a traditional, like I just made this block, which I feel like is a pretty like traditional block again in the civil re war recreation. Fabric. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with those fabrics right now, but there's something like historic about them that I feel like I'm like back in that era sewing and, and quilting. And anyway, and if you use them in the right way, I feel like people kind of shy away because they don't want them to turn out to be these like, you know, old looking quilts that you mm. typically, but I think if you use them in the right way, they can be really cool. So I, so I love everything from that to, um, you know, like improv quilting, which can end up being really modern and different and crazy. I, I really like it all. There's not, um, there's not a, a type that I can think. I'm sure there is. I'll, I'll have to think about it. I'll think about it tonight. I'll be like, oh yeah, I don't like that kind of thing at all. I don't like, you know, I don't like to use solids. Solids mm -hmm. are my, and I want to use more solids because I feel like it really helps to break up visually the quilts, like, like visually speaking, it, quilts kind of need these solids, but I always kind of jokingly say that I um, am morally opposed to, to solids and I really am. I like, I hate to use them. Um, but so I would say that I would say maybe, maybe not solids, but I'm, I'm working on it. I, I have been using more. So I, I agree with you. I, for some reason, I stay away from solids as well. And I, I mean, I'll, I'll use fabrics that read like a solid sometimes. Yes. They're usually a mottled, you know, kind of effect in that. But yeah, same thing. I don't know what it is about solids, why I stay away from them. But yeah, I think you, Moda just came, not just, I think a couple of years ago, maybe they came out with like that, this grunge series. Um, yeah, I know. It's like, they all have that grunge. And uh, I think that was really popular. And those are the kinds of like, you know, solids that I think you're talking about that. I, yeah. And I like that, that they feel like they have some kind of texture. They, they have something exactly. going on. Yeah, they have a little bit of texture. But that block you just showed me, I just saw your latest video. I think it was your latest one where you have deviated away from your Halloween applique quilt yes. on that. And then you went to that block and I love that block. I mean, it's a sawtooth uh, star, isn't it? What they call a sawtooth yeah, star? Yeah, so actually, and I should have said it in my video, um, but it's it's just one block from this pattern. I don't know this person. It's called a Nova Star Quilt by Megan Buchanan. I should have given her credit. I changed it a bit. Um, I changed it a bit, but it's almost exactly that exact, um, that exact block. And I, I like the, the, the colors and the patterns that you used in it and make it, I, and I, it's when you were talking at the beginning of that video, you were saying you weren't sure what you were going to do with it. And I was kept saying, make your quilt out of all of those blocks. That would be a fantastic quilt. And by the end of the video, you said, that's what you were going to do. And you're putting the applique one on hold, which I think was a very ambitious project. <laughs> Because I saw all the pieces you cut out and <laughs> I have done some applique, but nothing on that scale. So I oh. think you'd be working on that for quite a while. And yeah. the other thing is, again, this is something that I find really kind of unique about your style is you're not afraid to abandon a project if it's not going the way you want it or you have got another idea and move to it. You know, it's it's not the idea. OK, I can't go any further until I get this one done even if it kills me, 
Well, I think it, I think it's hard because it feels like you've wasted time. Like you only have so much time to do this quilting and you put the time in and then to abandon something feels so disheartening and like could have been doing something else. But, um, but you're right. I mean, I think, I think sometimes, and you know, just because you're abandoning it now doesn't mean forever, or maybe it turns into something totally different. Um, but I also think that like to force yourself to move forward with it, uh, it's not going to like, it's going to suck all the joy right out of the, yeah. right out of the process. Exactly. I don't think having UFOs is necessarily a bad thing. Everybody yeah. talks about that going, oh my God, I have so many UFOs. Well, I have about seven UFOs, you know, tops are done. I haven't layered them yet and all that kind of stuff, but you know, they're there. I'll be, when I'm in the mood, I'll do those too. Yes. So, you know, yep. I, I'm like the squirrel. You know, oh, I just saw that pattern. I really like that. Oh, I want to get on with that. And that's my my weakness in it, you know. I, so, but anyways, I'm glad to see that you are not afraid to, you know, do an about face uh, in, in your planning. So my next question then for you, um, just, can you describe your crafting, your sewing area? Do you have a, a, a quilting area in your house or? No, I wonder if I can... Um... Uh, I didn't, this is a little improv here. I didn't, I'm going to yeah. unplug my computer. I'll bring you to my sewing area. How about okay, that? Okay, great. We'll yes. See this, we'll see if this works because it's right over here. It's only ah, like okay. five steps away. And you can see, uh, you know, I didn't clean up, so that's okay. But this is my crafting area. It's the dining room table. Oh, there okay. it is. So, yep. <laughs> so the challenge is that um, my husband is a very tidy person mm. and um you know, I do have potential places that I could not be right in the middle of the dining room. Like we have a whole like huge attic where I store all of our stuff and everything. Um, and we have like a basement area, but I really like being like, a, like I like, um, you know, being able to do a, sew a couple squares and then go, you know, stir, stir some sauce. I don't actually cook. So stirring the sauce never happens, but go, <laughs> Go, you know, be be right. around my family kind of thing. And then sew a couple more squares. And I, and I don't like going off to another room. Um, so, so it's the dining room, but my husband is very tidy. Mm -hmm. And so I try to like, um, at the end of every night, but that stuff is from last night. So last night that stuff didn't get picked up, but, um, but I try to like have little baskets for all the stuff and, um, but you know, like there's threads everywhere. It's not an ideal situation, but I, but I, it's, it's an ideal situation for me. It's probably not an ideal situation for Derek, but, um, anyway, well, that's my works, crafting area. If it works for you, then it's an ideal area. Now, yeah, do it's all you about have, me, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any plans to like, I don't know if you're, you have room in your house. Do you have any plans to convert I have a room over? Room, um, so, I mean, I really could, uh, we have like a whole finished basement that's, um, really dry and carpeted and, uh, really nice. And I, I could set up the sewing area down there, but I just, um, in our old house, uh, we moved a couple of years ago. I did have a room that was just for sewing and I never sewed. I always brought my sewing machine out into mm -hmm. the living room. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. think I don't like to be by my, I actually, I love to be by myself. I love almost nothing more than, than being by myself. But when there's other people in the house, I don't like being by myself. I like to be around them. So I think I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to try and get better about being organized in, um, in my space, in my dining room space. Right. Yeah. We always say we're going to do that, but that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <that's> <laughs> you know, as long as it makes you happy, that's all that matters. That's yeah, all that matters. Exactly. So do you have a favorite tool or technique? A favorite tool or technique. I do have a favorite tool, but I can't show it to you because I had two and I can't find either one of them, but it's a little <laughs> seam gauger. It's a metal thing. You may have seen them. Yes. And so you can just hold it up to your seam and you can see that it's exactly a half inch. I'm not a half inch, a one fourth inch, but there's so, it, it, there's so many seam gauges on it that if you need a half inch, you can check that. And if you need like three eighths of an inch and you can cut, do you know the tool I mean? I have one and I didn't know how to use it. And you just explained how to use it. So now, okay, I get it. Cause I wasn't sure how to use it. Oh, that's yeah. funny. That's my yeah. favorite. And I need another one. They always, they always kind of float around. And then as soon as I buy one, I, the other one pops find up. The other one. But, 
Yeah. Okay. Now I got to find mine and get it out because I didn't realize that's how you're supposed to use it. That's why I'm an idiot quilter. <laughs> so there you go. Um, and so in what terms about of technique? technique yes. My favorite technique is um, crumb quilting, scrap quilting. Mm. That is so fun. And if and um, I follow a, a YouTube channel called the Quilting Marine. And one of my favorite things um, that he that I've seen him say is that you know he 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 experienced a lot of stress. I don't want to speak for him. I don't know exactly. But oh, when yeah. he was a Marine, he a lot of things went on that that stuck with him after he came back. And he said um, that when he crumb quilts, it's like this way to to get all his emotions out. And he has all of his crumbs in a bag. And he says um, that each one of his crumbs is an emotion. And so it's his bag of emotions. And I think that's just the coolest thing. Um, but that's, but for me, I just like to, I like to do it. It's relaxing. You don't have to think about it. Um, yeah. and it's, and it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I love making uh, quilts for my scraps too. And, and the same thing, you don't have to think about it. I just slap them down and whatever it turns out, turns out. Yeah. And I know for some people that is not their bag at all. They, <laughs> You know, they they don't want to do that because it, to them, it looks like it's a, a chaotic mess. But I also come from a mixed media background as well. And for me, that's a form of collage. And I love collage. So, yeah. So if you had all the money in the world, is there a piece of equipment that you would invest in? I go back and forth about the long arm. So I, it, you'd have to also assume that I had a whole nother room that doesn't exist to put the long arm in because that exactly. wouldn't work in my life right now. And I, I saw that you're getting a long arm. Did you get it? Yes, yet? it hasn't. It was supposed to arrive today, but I see that it's still in Buffalo, New York. And it now oh. it says it's going to be tomorrow. So yeah, we're excited about it. A uh, lot of work finding the space. Yes. Uh, you know, for it, but we have, we've managed to do that. And we're, we're both very sore from, cause I had to rechange my whole sewing area, as you know, from, if you've seen the video and whatnot, but yeah, it's a, a, a kind of a dream come true. Are you anxious at all about learning the long arm? Cause that's part of my thing is the, I feel like it's more, is, isn't it going to be kind of challenging or, or. Yes, it is. There's yeah. a learning curve, but what I have found is I have been quilting my quilts uh, on my domestic machine. Now I've got a really, uh, I'm, uh, an M7 Janome. I don't know if you know that brand or not, but it has a really large throat. It's, um, I think it's 13 inches, something like that. But nevertheless, I have to set up a part in my rec room uh, with tables, folding tables, and I've got it down to a pretty much a science. And I had to break through the barrier that I was going to ruin my quilt. I just finally one day said to myself, the hell with it. I'm just going to do it. Anyone know something? I haven't yeah. ruined a quilt yet. Are they perfect? Far from it. Um, are they going to win a show prize? No. And that's the attitude now that I have with the long arm. I'm going to play. Yep. And as the more you play, the better you get. But I'm not interested in entering shows or anything like that. This is for me. It's my hobby. It's for fun. So, yeah, the only thing I'm apprehensive about right now is putting it together. Yeah, it's pretty easy. It takes you about two and a half to three hours. And I have a great support out here in my area where I got it. There's um, a lady I've actually gone and used her machines. I've, I've done some long arm quilting before, mainly pantographs as, a, as opposed to free motion on them. But she's excellent. I've taken a couple of courses with her on her machines and she's there for support as well. So, no, I'm not I'm not apprehensive about it. And my husband he tried quilting, doesn't like it, moved into garment sewing. Now he, he's a fashionista. He makes our shirts and everything. I'm not wearing one of them today, but and pants and stuff like that. But he's the one that really was pushing for the long arm because he thinks it'd be really cool. He's used a long arm before too. And he's very artistic. And what's what I'm afraid of, he's going to be better than me. <laughs> but that's so okay. He 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 can't use the long arm for his garments or he can, he would be using the long arm for garment. No, he probably, unless he did a quilted garment and that actually we've talked about that. 
uh, trying our hand at that. So, but that's he, a new thing. That's like the big yeah. thing right now. Um, I don't yeah. know who is it. Um, somebody famous just wore a quilt on the Met Gala uh, red mm-hmm. carpet. Um, shoot, I forgot. I forgot who it is. It's um, Rihanna's boyfriend. He's a he's a big rapper. Oh, okay. Um, I I know him. I don't know his name either, but yeah. Yeah, well, so I don't know. There's it just opens up a whole new world of possibilities uh, with it. So yeah, I'm not apprehensive ab- about it. It's um, I'm just more anxious about the whole thing. Once it's up and it's running, and I've got a chance to play with it, I think I'll be much more relaxed about the whole thing. But anyways, this isn't about me. This is about you. So. Um, have you ever belonged to a guild or an online group? No. Well, an online group, yes. I want to join my local guild. And I'm you, you, I saw um you mentioned that you didn't have a great experience maybe with your guild all the time, but maybe you got no. some positive things out of it as well. I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I did I did. It was it was personalities and things, and plus I was the only man it, amongst a hundred ladies. And yeah. there was some resentment towards my sex. Interesting. Uh, with but I do belong to other groups online, which are totally the other way, the totally positive in the whole bit. So, you know, it depends. Not all guilds are the same. So you you're saying to find you, something that fits. Um, yeah. And and we'll see. We'll see if this. I don't even know if I can get into the guild. I really don't know anything about it. I just I, but yeah, I, I, I have to send in like, you know, the little form with your check and yeah. then. That's it, I think. <laughs> then you're that's just that's it. I've heard like with a lot of guilds, there's like wait lists and stuff, but maybe mm-hmm. maybe not with mine. I I don't know. We'll find out. I'll, I'll keep you posted on the guild thing. But I'm excited to get like feedback on my projects and to give people. Well, I, I I don't know about giving people feedback. That's actually not quite kind of my thing. But um, but just to uh, like a lot of times guilds will have like lectures, so you can listen yes. to the lectures. Or they'll have like little classes um, or like fabric swapping, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think will be it'll be nice to have some. Somebody, because I I don't know anybody who does quilting. Like I don't have any friends that quilt. Um, my two aunts that quilt are way way far away. So it would be nice to have some some buddies locally that you know are interested in quilting like I am. And you know that's what a guild does do. The guild I belong to, they had a guest speaker every month when we could physically meet, and then we went to virtual. And that worked out fine too. Uh, yeah. Some ways it almost worked out better. Uh, especially here where we live, uh, you know, when the snow comes, you know, if it's a bad night for weather, uh, a lot of the ladies did not want to drive in that, which I can't blame them for it. But yep. now, you know, with the virtual, no, uh, I, mine was more of an internal struggle. Uh, I did learn a lot. Um, and for the most part, many of the, the ladies that were in the guild were extremely helpful when I came in and were very, very friendly. It was just, you know, there's some clicks in there yeah. that you know, you got to watch, but that doesn't mean all guilds are that way. And I've just shy away from it. And I now belong to the Canadian male quilters group on Facebook. And uh, I belong to the quilters way, which comes out of Alberta. And uh, they're all virtual kind of things. And I quite enjoy those. And I've learned a lot. So I'm sure you will have a good experience in, in there as well. So, you know, Fingers anyway. crossed. Yeah, and if, and if you don't, or it's not for you, well, at least you gave it a try. And yeah. maybe there's and another deal somewhere. You yeah. know, there's a lot of them that are online now, and they take people from all around the world in them. Yeah. So you know, okay. So speaking of favorite things, which we are going to speak about now, uh, do you have a favorite store for sol- supplies, either a brick and mortar or online? I like any in-person local store, whether it's like in my town or, you know, that's part of what I love about um, going on vacation is kind of stumbling, you know, Googling the local quilt shop. And because I found, I guess it's surprising to me, but maybe it shouldn't be like, I would just think that like all local quilt shops basically had the same um, stuff because they're all getting it from the same vendors. Um, You know, like you have your Tula pink and Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Uh, But I'm finding that like you get different fabric wherever you go, there's different options. And that's, that's really cool. Uh, So that that would be my first choice. Um, I try to stay away from the box stores, but I find myself there pretty frequently. Um, You know, if I'm like drafting up a little quilt block and I don't want to use the really nice stuff, I'll, I'll um, use some of that 
box store fabric. Yep. Um, and then I have tried online shopping once. I know you really like the online shopping and I love I watching your videos about, um, about what you get. It's, it's like my, I have to say, it's my favorite part of your videos is when you, when you, when you show us your goods from your online <laughs> shopping sprees, I've only shopped online once. I have a hard time with it. Um, uh, because I don't, I like to see what I'm going to get before I get it. Mm -hmm. I've tried fat quarter shop and they're, they're, they're fast. And, um, if you buy over, I think $80, it's free shipping and they send you a little survey afterwards to see how your experience was. So I felt really good about my experience with them, but, um, I do love getting mail too. Having, yeah. wait, you know, seeing <laughs> yeah. the box show up at your door with the fabric is pretty amazing. Um, so that's day, basically, that's basically where I shop. A day without an Amazon delivery is a day without <laughs> sunshine, is what I always say. But uh, I never thought I would like to to do online shopping either for fabric because I wanted to feel it right. Yes. Yeah. Um, but out of necessity, when our, we only have one little quilt store here in the town that I live in and they're great. I love them. And I love the ladies that work there. Uh, they've been so helpful to me and they're, they're friends. They're actually friends, uh, now. And I love the whole environment of going in, but as you said, every quilt store has a little different flavor to it. And the same with the online ones too. And I have not had really any horrible experiences mm -hmm. with online shopping, and, but I stick to the brand names like Moda, Northcott, yep. those kind of things, because you know, the quality is there. That's and, right. Uh, so yeah, only once did I ever order some fabric that I was a little disappointed in because there must've been a color shift between the computer, and what they had posted and what I got. It wasn't horrible, but it, but that's not what time. you expected. Yeah. But that's the only time, you know, it's not an ugly fabric. It'll go somewhere. I don't know yeah. someday with it all, but yeah, I, I know what you mean about the stores. And do you have a lot of stores in your area? Like quilt stores? We have one. And then um, if you drive an hour in one direction, you hit a really good one. Uh, our local one is really good too. And then if you drive an hour in the other direction, you hit another one that I haven't actually been to. I haven't been to that other one. Um, but uh, between the two that I that I'm familiar with, I can usually I can usually find what I need. Yeah, well, that's good that you have. We, yeah, this is kind of the same situation for me, but uh, with, with the distance between other uh, quilt stores. But uh, like you, if I'm going somewhere, I go on the internet and search for quilt stores in the area. And yep. Check them all out. I love going to new quilt stores. And I, I, you know, the one thing too, that I have found, I was saying that in the guild I was in, there seemed to be some apprehension because I was a male. I have never, only one quilt store did I ever walk into that I got that kind of attitude. Every quilt store besides that one that I've been in, more than willing to be helpful in the whole bit. They don't turn around and go, oh, we're looking for my wife or whatever, uh, right. with me, which is I, I point that out because years, 20 years ago, I started as a scrapbooker and, uh, and when I'd go into a new craft store in that, I always used to get the, are you looking for something for your wife? And then when they figured out that I was actually a scrapbooker and I, I was buying a lot of stuff, you know, ka-ching, ka-ching, they <laughs> perked up, but I never had that from yeah. a quilt store. And even the one that I got a little bit of attitude, they were over it within minutes okay, yeah. oh, okay you know quilters are a pretty special group i think that they're yeah. you know in general they're they're wanting to share their love um, i think so of what they do yeah i think so for sure so are there any favorite experts or sources of information you go to um so they're primarily youtube um so darlene michaud do you know darlene michaud? yes i do so i follow her uh, people, uh, people have real mixed feelings about her and she's a I character her in a couple of videos. And, uh, a lot of people say they don't like her swearing and things like that, but she has been a huge inspiration to me and my quilting. I mean, I was following her basically when I first started quilting. And so her, you know, flexible, like if you watch some of her sampler quilts and things like that, I was actually just watching, um, her, I think it's called like small stuff series or something. Mm -hmm. And where she made like that big flower and her flexibility and her, uh, her laughter, I wouldn't say her joy of life because no. she really does not have that, no. but she, she's 
funny in kind of a dark way sometimes and her experimenting with fabric um I her, her eBay sales I love I've never won something of her eBay sales but I did bid on two of her current fabric bundles because she has like eight fabric bundles up I don't know if you, if you saw yeah. that but we'll see if I get it this time I bid on her a lot but I've never won um so I love Darlene and then I love Mary Fonz who is the daughter of Marianne Fonz who some people may know of Fonz and Porter so Marianne is um, Mary Fonz, Marianne's daughter is my age and she has her own YouTube channel and she's started what's called a Twitch channel. I don't know if you've heard of this, but it's Twitch is like mainly for gamers. And basically it's just like people watching them do their gaming thing. Well, Mary, um, uh, Mary Fonz has started this Twitch channel where she does quilt research. And so it's just like a couple hours of you straight of like watching her do her quilt research. Hmm. Um, but you can like engage with her doing that. Uh, anyway, which is kind of funny because, you know, I, I have said in so many of my YouTube videos, how much I love Mary Fonz. And then I was like watching her Twitch channel and I, and, uh, you know, I like typed something in and then she like responded back and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm actually engaging with <laughs> Mary Fonz. Fonz. Very, very yeah. cool. Yeah. So, I, I, I have watched her stuff too. And yeah, she's a guru. In, yeah. in the industry well she comes from a guru into yes. it right and, and, yeah. and guru and pioneers in you know modern quilting kind of a thing a tradition um so do you have any challenges or goals for the future you know kind of a bucket list of projects or I have a bunch of projects in the works. Um, I'm currently doing um, a my very first quilt along. I've never done a quilt along. It is by the so the warped spinster is the YouTube. Um, you can tell I spend a lot of time on, on YouTube. Um, but too. she's doing this mystery quilt along that involves two and a half inch squares. So like here's the beginning of my like two and a half inch square project. So I'm doing the mystery quilt along. I'm doing a, this is, I'm really excited for, but I, I I'm fearful that this is going to die out. See Steven emotionally. And I like, I want to push forward so badly. This is like one of those things that is starting to be like, I don't really know what to do with this project. It's my quilt of valor. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like made all these like random blocks for the quilt of valor. Like, look at these cute, um, like, look at these cute, eagles right oh, yeah that's nice like amazing right and then i made this huge <laughs> this is kind of ridiculous i made this huge eagle this huge applique eagle right so wow. i have all these pieces and i feel like i have momentum but um i don't know i'm a i'm a little bit like i gotta keep going because if i let too much time go by before i do my next stuff i will let that project die so i'm doing that i'm working on that halloween that's not really Halloween quilt anymore. Um, and then always my scrap quilting. Uh, and um, I have some like random projects I was doing for a while. I was saving my, I still am saving all my salvages and making these salvage blocks where if you put these together, you know, like oh. this, and you had a couple more turns yeah. into like a star kind of thing. Um, that's, I think that's it right now. I want to try some improv quilting. I've never done improv quilting and I want to, I want to do some of that. I think that that would be, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Thing I have problem with an improv quilting or just going ahead and doing my own thing is the math. Oh, <laughs> yes. No, the math, any, any math, isn't it amazing? So now that I know that you struggle with math too. I feel like it's amazing that we're quilters because there's so much math ah, in quilting. Yeah. It's the worst. An interview that I'm putting up uh, tomorrow that I just done are by, with two ladies and they both have PhDs in mechanical engineering. <laughs> and, you know, I think they've probably got the it cornered upon the mathematics when it comes to quilting. But yes. I mean, I was good in math in school, but I was not. quilting, I don't know what happens. It just... And so my quilts, when I put them together as scraps, and I'm trying to get something to fit together, they do become improv because I'm sticking in pieces to fill in the gaps and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, that's okay, too, as well. And I know you're trying to write a pattern as yes. well right now. I Good luck. About that. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about it, and I've stayed away from it because I have a feeling, well, you said it uh, in, your, in your video, too, that, you know, 
there's a lot more involved in writing a pattern than one would really think, you know? There is. And you know what, what gets me is like, I feel like no matter, so I, I, I don't mind if this pattern takes me like years to write. I just want to do a pattern from start to finish, have the pattern and be able to accurately create a quilt. But the I think part of the, the problem is I have to make so many quilts from this pattern before I feel strongly about it, because I feel yeah. like no matter what, you're always going to come across mistakes. And I cannot stand, I don't know if you've noticed on websites, um, some people have like a whole tab dedicated to just like mistakes of the patterns that yes. you go to. Yes. And I don't understand that. And I mean, maybe I'll under, I'll be more sympathetic once I've gone, gone through this pro- process and I'll be like, oh yeah, I, I understand why I have that tab now. But I'm like, don't you like try your quilts out like a million times yeah. before you publish a pattern that people are paying for? I don't know. I don't yeah, really. Yeah, you would think they would, wouldn't you? But yeah. I, th- I think what it might be, too, is because if this if this is a commercial interest, I think they're trying to churn them out as fast as they can, because it's, That's true. you know, they can't do it over years because they're not going to make a dime <laughs> on it kind of a deal. But uh, yeah, I agree. I've, I've hit some patterns that have just been frustrating. Because, you know, that's a glaring mistake. And yes, there are the tabs and you go searching for that. But I've had a few patterns where, nope. And I've written to them and said, you know, do you realize that in this? And then I have to second guess myself. I'm thinking, wait, maybe it's me. The house one that you did that you yeah. came across that error and mm-hmm. the fact that I, if I'm remembering correctly, they like had acknowledged to you at some point, like, yes, that's an error, but yeah. they still like made. So, and it's um Missouri star quote company yeah. who I love. So I, I only have like uh Jenny is, is like an amazing human being yeah. and I have nothing but love for her, but it's surprising to me that they went forward and like put a, you put, put a video out about how to make this quilt yeah. right is that because you did yeah you yeah what's the yeah. one yeah and it was they um i never really contacted them about it because i didn't have the confidence that well it must be me but i kept rebuilding the block and rebuilding the block and all the time i'm out by a quarter of an inch on it and then i watched her video of doing it and the same thing but she kind of passed over it a little bit so well you can just do this like basically fudge it and yeah. Okay, that's what I did. And it worked out fine. It's one of my favorite quilts uh, as well. It turned out fine. But yeah, it was very frustrating. And it was very frustrating because it came from a company like Missouri Star Quilt. Because yes, like you, I love Jenny Doan. Who doesn't? Yeah. You know, yeah. she's a goddess. Yes. You know, kind of a thing. So, um, but you know, in, in another way that made me happy that I that it wasn't just me. And it just goes to show you, no matter how much experience you have, you can still make a mistake. So, yeah. you know, no yeah. biggie. Yeah. But uh, so um, now I consider quilters uh, artists. Um, I know that that's kind of controversial because I've talked to people in museums and that. I used to be a docent at our local museum, uh, which was fine art. And uh, I talked to them about this, about quilting and, you know, the art in it. And, oh, they were just so... No, no, that's not art. That's a craft. Well, no, I think it's an art. So now this might be a hard question I'm going to ask you. How would you describe yourself as an artist? Um, I believe I am an artist because uh, that's just how I feel. I feel like you can just say you're an artist and you are. It's just one of those things. Yeah. Um, in terms of quilts being uh, art. I think in certain contexts they are I actually, um, I'm very, I'm a very opinionated person and I have feelings about pretty much everything. I actually don't have strong feelings about if, um, if quilting, if, if quilts are a craft or an art for some reason, I think that they can be both. Um, and, uh, I think that they've proven over a long period of time. I mean, they're hanging in museums, uh, not just because of their historic nature, but um, I wish I could remember that one in the seventies where they hung all those quilts. It was like the first time that it was like an art exhibit. Um, But people like, it was like some super famous museum and people, um, so many people went to see this exhibit that they had it up for so much, I think it was like in the seventies or eighties. And they, they had the exhibit up for so much longer than they thought that they were going to. And I think right there, I mean, that, that was an art exhibit. It wasn't about like these historical quilts or anything. So, but then, um, you know, quilts are very utilitarian. 
they are very much, I don't think anyone could deny that they're a craft in some way. They're like an amazing American craft. Uh, so I think that they're both. And, but I certainly consider myself an artist. And I think some of my quilts are probably more utilitarian and some of them are more, um, are more artful, especially yeah. like the more modern, um, quilts that you see, yeah. like those, like the art quilt. I mean, I think they say that's like the name of them, right? Like art quilts. Yeah, they call them an art quilt. Yeah, yeah. True. With that too. I've, I've, well, I've made a couple that are kind of art quilts. Um, I was experimenting more or less with uh, different types of fiber and backings and stuff like that when I did them. But um, yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. There are those quilts that they're meant to be seen and hung on a wall and admired because of their color, their, the texture, all that kind of stuff. And then there are the quilts that you make that are meant to go on somebody's bed or in a baby's crib or something like that. They're more as you said, you'll tear a tear. I can't say the word, but <laughs> yeah. it's a tough, it's a yeah, tough, it's a tough one, right? but you know what I mean? Yes. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I get that, uh, the definition of it. So my last question for you is for anybody that would be starting out in quilting, do you have any advice for them? Um, uh, just like start sewing pieces together. Um, I think a lot of people do like the regular, just like nine patch blocks. And my fear is if people just start with that, that it's going to be boring. Um, like just remember everything has to come back to a square, which actually isn't true. That's not, that's actually not even accurate, but everything has to measure so that it can lay flat. So just, just start playing with things. I think a great first quilt is a sampler quilt, like a simple sampler where like one block is one thing and another block is another thing. Um, and that will like give beginner quilters a good sense of different types of ways to sew fabric um, together. And you can even do like a pretty small one, uh, really basic blocks. As long That's as the tough. blocks are all the same size, you don't even have to get the blocks from the same pattern. True. Uh, in fact, that was how I got started. Uh, oh, really? My first one was a sampler. I knew nothing about quilting. I didn't have any desire to sew. I bought a sewing machine one day for crafting, for crafting. I was going to sew paper and I oh. got a deal on one at Costco for 180 bucks, a brother machine with 50 decorative stitches. And I thought, yeah, <laughs> this will be cool. Cause I was into mixed media at the time. And uh, then I happened to, well, I had also bought a Cricut maker at the time and it had a special, it was toted as being able to cut fabric and it had a pattern for a simple wall hanging. I made the wall hanging and thought, you know, actually, I kind of like doing this. And then I started investigating quilt stores and went, walked into one. And there was an, uh, a quilt by Alex Anderson. It was a kit using K facet fabrics. And I followed it. I put it together. Oh, yeah, it's wonky. Uh, and the whole bit, but that's what hooked me. And that was almost four years ago. And bang, I haven't looked back since. Uh, yeah, with it's it. walking so, yeah. into that. It's walking into that fabric shop that will get you. It's like yeah, once you oh, go yeah. into the fabric shop, it's over. Um, <laughs> you're 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 yeah. just a quilter for life, I think. Well, we were um, talking I, about I, I will I should touch base with you at some point yeah. about your Cricut uh, fabric machine because I, I bought one and actually I was gifted one and I want so desperately to use it, but I'm I'm terrified. Uh, but um, well, I but haven't I heard had you any can luck. fabric out of it. Well, on the Cricut Maker, it has a special blade, a rotary cutter blade. Yeah. And it doesn't work for me. It only has worked a couple of times and I've contacted the company. I've had it now for a few years, well, four years. And I just, I just abandoned trying to cut fabric with it. I, I bought it more for cutting paper and stuff. Paper. And I actually, it's my third Cricut. Um, I've had them through my crafting and I do love Cricut uh, with it, but not for cutting the fabric, but other people yeah. swear by it. So I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with my machine or I mean, I'll idiot. experiment with it. I'll let you yeah. know if I have any better luck. Yeah. So, and you want to know something to be honest. I mean, okay. It'd be great for cutting appliques, I think right. intricate appliques, but if you just want to do it to cut, you know, your basic strips and squares and stuff like that, you're faster using your rotary blade. I totally agree. Like and I, I like cutting fabric. I think I'm in the minority there, but I really like getting my rotary cutter and my ruler and my mat, just cutting out those pieces yeah. feels good. 
Yeah. It, well, it gives you a sense of accomplishment, you know, because yep. you see your pile of fabric all yep. ready to go for the next. Like thing. laundry. You see your yep. pile of finished folded laundry. <laughs> yeah. Hate doing it though. <laughs> I'd rather quilt. Okay, rather so, rotary cut. So this has been really great. Is there anything you, you'd like to say before I, I thank you and sign off? No, if, you, if, if people like YouTube, check out my YouTube channel. It's called Mostly Quilts. But uh, Stephen, I so enjoy watching your YouTube videos and I really appreciate you having on me on today. This has been just so much fun. I feel you know, like I found a kindred spirit. So thank yeah, you. For I do that. too. And uh, I will link your YouTube channel into the show notes for this when this goes up. It'll go up in another week's time or something. But I, I want to thank you uh, for this. This was great. I love meeting you. I wish we lived closer because, as you I said, know. I kind of feel your kindred spirit too. I think it'd be neat for us to get together in an afternoon and quilt yes, and all that kind I of stuff. I would love that. So, but unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. But maybe anyway, someday. yeah, maybe someday. So stay on the line here. I'm just going to okay. stop the recording. And so once again, thank you so much, Nora. It was excellent. It was great. Thank you.